to carry tonight, where for the fourth straight season, this matchup will determine who will go on to win the Northern 10 Championship. It's 5-0 Colonel Crawford and the streaking Blue Devils for first place in the league, and it all goes down live and free right here on the OH Report. Next. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. We dance, we play, we love, we nourish, we yearn and wish and hope and cherish. We mend, we heal, we repair. We sow, we plant and tend and gather and grow. We feed our families and the worlds too. It's a calling, a feeling, real and true. We need no thanks rewards or dues. We love this land. It's what we do. Joshua Banks, I am Brian Skoronsky, and once again, Kerry and Colonel Crawford, the top two teams in the Northern 10. Tonight's game figures to be the de facto conference championship yet again, Mr. Banks, so there's a lot at stake. Yeah, a lot at stake. Crawford has not been able to beat Kerry in conference play in two years. They pull off an upset last year in a district championship game to, or a district semifinal game to go to a district championship game where they get beat. Can they do it twice in a row within a year span is the question. Well, our team spotlight tonight brought to you by First Federal Community Bank for the Eagles here on the road. Uh, they pulled out a tough win on the West Virginia border back in week one. Since then, they're averaging 48 points a game. They've allowed just seven scores in their last four. So defensively, this team, they're starting to become a juggernaut. Yeah, defensively, they're one of the best teams we're going to see in the N10 this year. And that's what's going to be such a good matchup here tonight. A phenomenal defense that's finally coming into their own in Colonel Crawford against an always dominant carry defense. But we're going to see Colonel Crawford tonight 
led by a kid that was an All-Ohioan last year as a receiver, now steps into that quarterback spot, and I believe he's our player spotlight, and, and that's senior Trevor Vogt. We'll see what the hype's all about tonight. Yeah, Trevor is our player spotlight tonight. He only has a 29 t attempts as a passer, but he's on pace to surpass 1,000 yards as a runner. And along with Micah Thomas, they probably have the best rushing attack in the area when you look at a true one-two combo. Well, and you throw in, you know, Connor McMichael, who will step in there and get some carries as well. They really have a three-headed monster in the backfield, and that's what makes them so difficult to stop as they come into their own. And speaking of coming into their own, how about just coming into the stadium? Here come the Eagles. The home team ran out first, kind of uncharacteristic of most stadiums where they all allow the visitor to come out on the field. But here are the Eagles trying to pull off, as you said, probably I think a little bit of an upset maybe in the eyes of a lot of people just because out here in Cary Country, baby, they, they take football pretty serious. Yeah, I mean, you see that. You're not going to go to very many schools in the state of Ohio, let alone within a 35 to 40 mile range of Richland and Crawford County, where they have a high school football field. And I got to spend some time Tuesday right around the corner at their separate football field they use for middle school. Most schools don't have that. So this is what their season's all about is this football. And for Kerry, they've won three straight they started with back-to-back -back losses to teams that we know very good, 9-1, Josh. But they've outscored their last three opponents, 103-14, to pal. Yeah, they have absolutely dominated their last three opponents, including two consecutive shutouts. Last week, they take, control, take care of a very talented Buckeye Central team, who I watched play week one against, Buc or against Crestline. Looked very balanced, very good, and Kerry just absolutely destroyed them last week on a football field. And one of their youngsters, Eli Steen, is our player spotlight tonight. Fifth in the N10 in rushing yards, sixth in scoring. He hasn't fumbled all year, though, so I think that shows great maturity for a sophomore in a system like this where he's going to get a ton of touches. Well, and that's something we've known carry every year. Ever since their state title season, they've really relied. They have that one running back that's going to pound the football, and they're going to run it down your throat. And this year it's a sophomore, Eli Steen, who's done everything that they've asked out of him so far this season. So our keys to the game tonight presented by First Federal Community Bank. Let's go first with the Cary Blue Devils. And I'm going with forced air, buddy. And that's not the type at your house where you've got some of that high water pressure heat during the wintertime. I'm talking about make Trevor Vogt step back in the pocket and prove to you that he can throw it. I'd stack eight, nine, ten guys in the box just to see if they'll throw out a wrinkle. And I'm going to say control the tempo. Pound it down their throats like Cary's known to do. Take care of business on the ground as well. It's going to lead them to victory here on their home field tonight. And on the other side for Colonel Crawford, you got to just uh, be you. Do what you do, I think, tonight, Josh, because this is a team that they've been playing some great football, not only this season, but the last few campaigns. So just play Eagle football. You're going to be fine tonight. Yeah, and I'm going to say own the box. Control the box on the offensive and defensive sides. We know Kerry wants to run it down your throat. Don't allow them to do that. And on the offensive side, continue to let Michael, Micah Thomas, Connor McMichael, and Trevor Vogt pound the football, win the run game. And that will wrap up our first Federal Community Bank pregame show as we are ready for high school football action. Winner of this game has gone on to win the last three and ten titles. Carey has cashed in the last two league crowns. Crawford, of course, the champs back in 2020. And like we said, they're trying to come into carry. They did it last year at playoff time, but they haven't done it in the regular season in two years. We'll see if they can do it tonight. Definitely a tall task, but the Eagles will get the football first and will have an opportunity to establish something here as we are underway, and it's a short kick. It'll go out of bounds. Eagles will get it at the 35-yard line. Looks like almost going for a squib onside kick there. The carry side just couldn't quite get to the ball. But you got a very dangerous returner back there for Crawford and Trevor Vogt, who they just, he's an athlete all on the field no matter where he's at. They don't want to put the ball in his hands at all. It'll be a Burson Bakey first down. First possession here for either side tonight. Eagles with Vote running the show. As we talked about, though, there really is a three-headed monster, as Josh outlined. 
but they don't throw it a whole lot. Under 90 yards per contest, so you see Carey putting a whole lot of guys right up next to the line of scrimmage, and they will come up with the stop. Minimal gain here to start things off. And that's what Carey's going to have to do all night long, force Trevor Vote, like you said, be, force the air, force Trevor Vote to show you, hey, look, I was an old Ohio receiver, and I'm going to come out and I'm going to dominate with my arm this year. They had nine, ten guys in the box right there, and they said beat us in the air, and they're going to do that all night long. Goes down is actually no gain on the play, so it's second down 10 here for the Eagles as Vote checks his wristband. 6'2 senior, listed at a buck 85, so he is a physical player back there. And it looks like there's going to be a timeout taken by Coach Bruner walking out onto the field and a lot of confusion talking to Ryan McMichael out there. Maybe an incorrect play call or whatever it was, they didn't like the look. And, and he was trying to motion his third back, as we'll call him with McMichael, to get in the right position. Started on the right side, motion to the left, and then Trevor was telling him, hey, no, you're supposed to be over here because you're supposed to block this guy. Didn't quite get things done before the play clock was going to expire. That could be a costly timeout here in the first quarter that Coach Bruner had to call. In a game like this, you don't want to have to waste timeouts, and we're not even 45 seconds into the first quarter, and they have to waste the timeout already. Give me a quick chance to thank our generous sponsors tonight. HDER link all over tonight's program. Thanks to Mr. Sean Berge, who had to come up in the box as well, help us with a little internet situation that we had. So, I mean, the dude's out here trying to be a fan and still working on a Friday night. Hey, you can't ask for anything more, can you? I love it. Two receiver set, here's vote option look all the way and he is slung down, no gain. Alec Putman getting into the backfield and disrupts that before it had a chance to even get started. Yeah, he read that keep the whole way. Putnam does a phenomenal job from his defensive end spot, a seal on the edge, keeps vote inside. Vote's not able to cut inside and get upfield. You can't ask for anything more if you're carry. You're third and 15. If you're Crawford here, you have to throw the football. Or do they? We'll find out here, Josh. They will put Vote back to pass. Rolls left, going deep. Got a man with a couple of steps. Well underthrown, and it's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Austin Niedercore on the underthrown pass by Vote. And boy, did he have a man wide open, as we'll show you on the replay coming up here in just a moment. Yeah, he had Braxton Morton streaking down the sideline all by himself. That ball was four or five yards underthrown, as you're going to see right here. Niedercore just steps in front of him and takes it from him. First There's the mistake. Play. There's the mistake. The first mistake, and you force Crawford into a third and 15, made him throw the ball. And now, Carey, this is what I talked about. Control the tempo now. Run the football. Eat as much of this first quarter clock as you can. Come out in basically a wing T formation here. And they'll toss it inside to Connor Norton. He spins away from a first would-be tackler and makes a pretty nice run out of it. That's a great formation there. You, you see Eli Steen come off. They fake it to him. A little toss. Almost looked like a Lucy, Lucas Cub play that we see every week with that wing tee. A little reverse sweep there. They're a tough offense to plan for. Even if you plan for them every year, the way they, the sets that they run, the way they line up, they're really tough to plan for. Now they're going to come in a power eye with three backs in the backfield. Carter Smiley, the quarterback now in his senior season. They'll toss it. And it's a new ball carrier this time, Niedencore, who had the interception. And he catches the edge. A couple of fans here on the home side wanting a horse collar tackle. But it will be a first down, Josh. That's two plays, 15, 16 yards on two plays. If you're carry, you're doing exactly what you want to do. Crawford's going to have to shore up some things here defensively. But... Statistically, Crawford's defense has not been great this year, giving up almost 300 yards a game. So is this their break moment? Still giving up under 10 points per game, but will allow you to move the football. New formation here, two receivers near side. Smiley rolls that way, looking deep. Got a man going that way. Carter's going to tuck it, and he's going to take a big pop. Three Eagles come in, flags all over the place. And this is going to be one of those type of plays where they just feel like the quarterback, not necessarily in a defenseless position, but might have had a foot on the chalk. 
he wasn't defenseless, but he was heading out of bounds. As you'll see here, he's heading out of bounds. And you two Eagles come over, converge late. And, and I mean, that's just uncalled for. That's a senior in Ryan McMichael coming over here, hitting him late. You just can't do that. So it's a fresh set of downs here for the Blue Devils on the move already. About 40 yards. Just took them three plays to do it. Stack back this time, they'll toss it. Fighting for some extra yards is Connor Norton. And this running attack right now, Josh. I mean, these Blue Devils, this is what we expect from them. Absolutely, this is what we expect from Kerry. This is what won them a state title just a few years ago. Was this power football. Second down, they'll keep it on the ground. Yet again hit basically right at the sticks. So it'll depend on the spot of this one. Looks like he's going to be about a yard short. So the referees do signal that it's going to be third down and one. The way Carey runs the football, this is one of those things where this is where you want to be. Third and one, you're either going to go in that wing, that single wing T, or you're going to go to your triple I formation, and you're going to hand it to that up back and let him go get a yard. We see Eli Steen, one of the lead backs, as Smiley rolls behind him. A couple of nice blocks. He floats this one back of the end zone, single coverage, and incomplete trying to find Putnam. Fourth down. Not what I expected out of carry there. Third and I wouldn't even call that a full yard, maybe half a yard. And they take a shot at the end zone. Unless if you're carry, you know it's third and a foot. You can go up the middle for it. Take your shot there. Come out here. It looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth and one. You expect to get a yard on every play. So They've got Broadman down and four-point stance. They'll turn to hand it to Steen. He's stacked up at the box. No way did he get that one. The Eagles going to come away with the stop. So after the interception, Colonel Crawford's defense, little bend, don't break. You talked about the yards they'll give up, but they don't let you, once you get down to this end of the football field, Josh, get into the end zone very easily. Yeah, they do a great job there on fourth and, like we talked about, half a football length. They tried to go outside. Steen tried to get the edge, and the entire Eagles defense is there to meet him with ease. So it'll be the second drive coming up here for the Eagles. Felt like this was definitely going to be a game ran by the defenses. And so far, turnover now on each side on opening drives. Yeah, it's a tough way to start for both teams. I mean, you come out, you expect to be able to move the football. This is Micah Thomas with the carry, maybe a yard on the game. Looks like they're going to give him two. They're going to move that up to the big line, up to the 25. Generous spot. Didn't look like he got that much yardage on that carry. Carry with a lot of beef up front, as we've come to see from them for many, many seasons now. And we'll get a kind of a play action look as they hand it off left side. And again, just not a whole lot of breathing room, so it's quickly third down long. Eagles will need eight to keep the offense out here on the field. And it's another one of those situations you're making them throw the football. They've got Vote back in the gun. And this is going to be the second charge timeout for Colonel Crawford here in this opening half. Could become valuable towards the end of the quarter, but you never know, Josh. Uh, so just trying to use him, Jake Bruner, when, when he feels like needed most. 
Yeah, I mean, he's using the timeouts, but it's because his offense just can't. Communication is not working very well right now offensively if you're the Eagles. We'll work on getting you guys better picture after we get another break here. Third and eight. Now if you carry, you're gonna, as you see, they're gonna drop, they're gonna put six guys in the box, they're gonna drop five and see what happens. Eagles just gonna hand it off. A little bit of room to the outside, but the Blue Devils come up, they converge and they make the stop there on McMichael. Three and out after they get the ball back. I think the difference tonight, and we're seeing it here in the first quarter, which offense can get three even at this point? I mean, a, a field goal might win the game tonight. That was my prediction. I said if somebody could get 10 in the pregame that I would feel pretty comfortable with where they would sit as that one might have been tipped. There was definitely a couple of Blue Devils in the area. And they'll get the football at their own 40-yard line with a burst in Bakey's first down and 10. Decent roll there. That punt was end over end. Not exactly what you want. Carey does a great job getting away from it. But we already seen what this Carey offense can do, moving the ball downfield re relatively easily in that first drive. Once they got on the other side of the 50, Crawford's defense tightened up and said, you're not going anywhere else. Smiley's got a man on his left hip, that's Broadman. And he's gonna run to the left side here. A lot of space for Carter Smiley. He catches a break at the edge, down inside the 30 yard line. A huge run here to open up the drive for the Blue Devils. It's a 30 yard run for Carter Smiley. And once he got that corner, Luckily enough, McMichael was there to push him out, or that's six. So the Eagles again allow a big run to set the Blue Devil offense up just outside of the red zone here at the 30. First down 10. Seeing the man in the backfield as they'll motion Broadman left to right. And here's Smiley in behind both of them. But a great open field tackle by Trey Skaggs. So really no gain on the play. Second down and 10 coming up. Same play they ran to the opposite side. This time they went with the fake. And that was Lane Wright correction um, that made that tackle. But he just did a great job containing the edge, not letting Smiley have the corner. Back to pass, Carter going for it all to the end zone. That was Alex Putnam trying to make a play on it. Excellent coverage. And when you look at the throw, the defensive back, well, I guess you can't really see here. We've, we've got that whole corner of the end zone cut out. But there was, it was tough to pick it up out of the air that time for the defensive back there of Crawford. So if that was thrown to the interior of the end zone where we could actually see Josh, it probably would have been a touchdown. I mean, that, that was a great route by Putnam. He got separation from the defensive back. Goddard did it. Logan Goddard did a great job for Crawford to get back there. But it was just overthrown into the wrong side of the shoulder. Trips to the left for Smiley. Looks that way. Now he's got to move around, chucks it up again. Man, he is not shy about going to the end zone. Brady Hill nearly came down with it, but it will fall incomplete. Fourth down on the way here for the Devils offense, and they're definitely going to stay on the field here at the 30. And, and again, they got across the 50 in one play with a 30-yard Carter, Carter Smiley run. They haven't moved the ball since. Coach Mershman sends in Putnam with the play call. As the play clock rolling down to 10, they still got time to get it off. 
Lone receiver to the near side here is Niedercore. That's going to be their mismatch, but it's going to be a keep for Smiley. And on fourth down, they go backwards. Nothing doing as the Eagles' defense shines bright. Caden Bruner cut that edge off and made a great tackle to not let Smiley get around the corner. So it's a burst in Bakey's insurance. First down and 10. As the Eagles offense going to get their third try out on the field here. Three and out on their last possession. Three and out interception and two consecutive turnover on downs for Carey. I mean, this is fun football to watch. Blue Devils going to call their first charge timeout. Must have saw something out there that they didn't like. The defensive coordinator running over to the referee and making sure that Eagles didn't get a chance to get this one off. And we've seen that last possession for Carey. Smiley had the huge run on first down. The next three plays were pass plays. They tried to attack Crawford through the air, which I don't know about you, but I didn't expect to see them do this early in the game, especially with how easily they moved it down the field on the ground in that first drive. They've definitely been taking some shots. Smiley trying to get it into the end zone. Only on one occasion, though, Joshua, did they have one-on-one -on -one coverage, so he's putting up some pretty dangerous passes into a secondary that's been opportunistic so far this season. Yeah, I mean, opportunistic. I mean, he's thrown already on the season. He's thrown three interceptions in four games, so you really – five games, you really kind of – those are risky passes. On first down, they'll play action, and they'll set up the screen pass to the outside. Lucas Foy with some shake and bake. It's going to go down as a gain about four. And that's great pursuit by the carry secondary. Lucas Foy made that first guy miss. The rest of the carry Blue Devils defense flew to him and didn't let him get up the sideline. Thomas will be the lone back to the left tip here of Voigt. As they'll motion a man in and out. That's McMichael, and they're going to run back to that right side, and instantly everything just collapses. As we've got another third down on the way here for the Eagles offense. And even if you look back into last year at Colonel Crawford, Trevor Vogt had a phenomenal season at wide receiver with Cam Lohr at quarterback, but even then they were a run first team. They had the ability to throw the ball. This year, a lot of teams are just like we talked about. They're putting nine, ten guys in the box, saying beat us with your arm, and they might be 5-0 and oh and scoring a lot of points, but it's been with the run game. They haven't beat anybody with the arms yet. Bring Rowan through in motion and now rolling out and throwing and connecting his Vogt. He's got Ryan McMichael in the pass game, and that is a critical first down for the Eagles offense. And that was a great job by Vote on the rollout. He rolled out left, squared his shoulders to his target, and got the ball downfield on a laser to McMichael. Crucial first down for the Eagles. Just about at midfield here. 51 yards away from the end zone. And the Eagles offense doing a nice job mixing it up in terms of their pre-snap eye candy. But look at the pursuit here by the Cary Blue Devils defense. As that's Connor McMichael just absolutely demolished as there's one, two, three, four, five Blue Devils that get in on the play. McMichael makes the first guy miss. But when you've got that kind of pursuit to the ball, it doesn't matter if you make the first guy miss because you're not going to make six other guys miss when you're playing against the Cary Blue Devils. Goes down as a loss of five, second and long here for Vote and Company. Votes lined up out at receiver. Yeah, you're right. This is Peyton Baker 
And he meets the same fate. Niedercore coming in to make the stop there. Excuse me, that's Nathan Broadman. Boom. And in that situation, if you're carry, you see Vogt go out to receiver. The ball's try they're trying to get the ball to him at that point in time. I mean, you just key on him, send everybody else at the quarterback. Third and forever here for Trevor. A lot of pressure coming in, takes a big pop and he's skying this one and it's gonna be picked off, intercepted by Trip Phoenix. But just about everybody in the carry secondary had a chance at that one. You had one guy come over and try to jump and catch it and it just dropped into the hands of Trip Phoenix. There was three carry Blue Devils that would have intercepted that ball. So it's a burst in Bakey Insurance. First down and 10 here for the carry offense. And boy, they almost didn't come up with that because you're right, two guys basically in the picture, both going after the football. Works out though. That's twice now they forced Crawford into third and 20. They're gonna give it to Eli Steen. And he's still rumbling. Basically made that entire run happen all on his own. Gain of seven there. But that's twice they forced him into third and double sticks, 20 plus. And both times they've done that, it's been an interception because they've tried to take a deep shot. If you're third and 20, do you almost say, hey, let's just get five or 10 yards and try to pin them deep? We'll find out here. I formation second. Steen again, the ball carrier. And he will have enough for the first down. Carries really mixing it up tonight. The last drive they come out, every play was from the gun. Now the first two plays have been from that strong eye, triple eye formation. And they're gonna come out in it again. As the clock rolls under a minute to go here in this opening quarter. Blue Devils keep it on the ground. Little crease here to the near side. Eagles hold them to about two yards there. Could be the final play here of a defensive opening quarter. Just as we anticipated here tonight, Carey and Colonel Crawford fighting for the top spot in the Northern 10 Conference. Offsides against Colonel Crawford. Every penalty in a game like this of kind of field position, of course, so valuable. Shooting yourself in the foot with mistakes is not going to help you in a game like this. Eli Steen's going to get a carry. He's going to get on the edge, and he's going to get another carry first down and gain six yards on that run. For just a sophomore, this kid, excellent vision. And some hard nose running takes us to the end of the first quarter. We've got no score here in Cary in a fight for the top spot in the Northern 10. Are you ready for the comeback?
0 0 one quarter in the books here at Cary Blue Devil Stadium. In a defensive showdown between the top two teams yet again in the Northern 10 Conference. I'm Brian Skronsky. Joshua Banks is with me. And it's Kerry with the football to open things up. Fresh set, first down and 10. As they're showcasing a lot of different playmakers here tonight, this is yet another one of them. Niedercore able to put together a nice run. Yeah, Niedercore does a great job there of getting the edge, but the biggest thing there is he didn't stop his feet. He got hit in the backfield, kept his feet going, broke the arm tackle, ended up getting an extra six or seven yards on the carry. We'd like to thank the football sponsor, the cheerleaders throw out, by Social Good Promotions, so far food. Second down and short on the way here for Carey. A lot of beef in that backfield. And they'll run it straight ahead to get the chain gang back on the move. It's going to be a Burson Bakey's insurance first down. And Josh, nothing fancy about that one. No pre-snap whips or motions. Just put three dudes in the backfield that you feel like are a little bit more physical than the opposition and go right ahead. Looks very similar to the offense they ran three, two years ago when they won a state championship with Jordan Vallejo as that halfback in the middle, the big, strong kid, just like an Eli Steen, that can pound it at you, and he's not going to stop going. Give it to the up back this time, and that is Steen. Kind of got whipped down to the playing surface as he's able to inch forward for about four more yards. Aggressive tackle this time by the Eagles and McMichael. That's a great job there by Colonel Crawford there to not let him get a big gain. But when you're as big as Eli Steen is, I mean, he's listed six foot 240. You're going to fall forward for two or three yards every time you get a ball as long as you get that momentum going. Blue Devils sticking with the same formation. Put it in Smiley's hand this time. Three Eagles all converge to make the stop. As this goes down for the loss of a couple, you see it here on the Baker's Pizza instant replay. Nice pursuit that time by Brady Hill and company. Yeah, it's a great job. It was almost a read option there for Smiley. He faked it to Steen. He had Norton running with him on the edge. Third down here, Smiley on the edge. Got a man and a completion. Dominic Yater with the catch. And we've seen Carter Smiley. He's made a couple of decisions that you don't love in the passing game tonight, but he's also throwing some pretty decent targets on, on the run here, Josh. Yeah, and that's a great job by Smiley on the rollout. They really want to keep him moving. They're not going to put him in a position where he's just sitting in the pocket. He's always going to be rolling out one way or the other, and that time he rolls out and makes the right decision getting the ball to Yeter. Yeter cores the back. He's got the carry. And straight ahead he goes. And it just feels like the Blue Devils are almost always going forward. No one went to carry yeah, I mean, this is this is Blue Devil football. This is what we've come accustomed to seeing them do. This is what we expect when we come to a carry football game. They're going to have a couple big plays. They're going to hit you with a deep shot every now and then. That eventually is going to be completed. Other than that, they're going to run it down your throat. To the up man this time, Steen. Keep its legs churning. Right at the red zone. So he'll have two. It'll bring up a third down here for Smiley in the offense. It's like about a third and five here for Carey. But if you're Carey, this is where you want to be. You're in the red zone, third and five. You're getting about three yards of carry every time you hand the football up the middle to either Steen, Niedercore, or Norton. You end up fourth and one. It's right where you want to be. 
Niedercore puts his head down. He trucks forward out near the 15. The referee's going to say it's a Burson Bakey's insurance first down. Decent hole on that left side, opened up through the A gap. Blue Devils with some great size up front. You see Garrett Bowes there, 255 pounds at the tackle position, able to move his guy back a couple of yards. First trip into the red zone for either offense tonight. It'll be a toss to Austin, weaving his way in through some Eagles. Gonna get about seven. That's a great job on the edge by the receiver to go out and seal that corner that was gonna blow that toss up. It's the thing about Kerry's offense, as long as their blockers, their receivers, their tight ends, and those other backs do their job, their plays are gonna be big and explosive every time. Second down, Smiley, I think might've got stepped on by his center. So unfortunate here if you're a Blue Devil fan, and I don't know, maybe he was just doing the matrix right from the start, lost his balance before he had, had a chance to turn. Didn't look like anybody stepped on his cleats. Well, and it's one of those things where if you watch Smiley, when he takes the snap, he reverses out. So they almost go opposite side of the snap every time. So he was turning right to hand that ball off to Steen. Lost his footing, fell on the ground, as this time Steen's going to get it up the middle, reverse field. He's going to drive forward. Oh, what a man's run right there by the sophomore. And he's going to be marked down at the two, as that's going to be a first down. And it's not going to be first and goal for Carey from the two-yard line. Take a look at Steen. Tried the right side. Able to get in through a little crease. And just right at the goal line, knocking on the door here. Blue Devils in business inside of the two. First and goal. And already eaten three minutes. Or They'll give it to the up man straight ahead. This is Broadman. And the referees Touchdown. say that he did get in. So the Cary Blue Devils strike first here at home. As the cheerleader is getting this place rocking. Nothing but hard nose running those last 20 yards for the Blue Devils. And they eat over half of the second quarter clock. When they started with possession here in the second quarter, control the game, run the football, will win, carry this football game, and that's what they're already proven. The PAT is pure, so seven nothing carry goes on top at the 538 mark here at home. Are you ready for the comeback? Tonight's After Touchdown sponsor is HDER Link, providing reliable, affordable, friendly internet service to residential and business customers. Contact HDER Link today by calling 419 396 3815. First blood drawn by the Cary Blue Devils here in this Northern Tan Rivalry Showdown. Here it is yet again. Nathan Broadman bulldozing his way in. The 6-4 fullback. Let's get the Devils on the board. And they'll kick it off short. Handled by one of the up men for Cary. Colonel Crawford, rather. And this will be their fourth drive here of the evening. Their fourth drive of the evening, and Crawford has amassed one first down. Force him to throw the ball, load the box. 
with that last touchdown. Carries now outscored their last four opponents 110 to 14 Joshua so this is a team starting to find their groove and especially here at home this squad feels like they can be unbeatable at times as vote had instant pressure and a lot of carry fans anticipating a flag they are going to get one Calling for intentional grounding. That is going to be the call, Josh. Let's check this out one more time. The carry sideline was screaming for it. The side judge didn't give it to him, but the official did. Yeah, he's definitely not outside of the tackles. No receiver near the ball. That's the correct call. And you saw Putman just bursting in there, forcing a quick pass from Trevor Vogt. And it did not cross the line of scrimmage, so it's the penalty yardage plus a loss of down, and this is a big one right here. I mean, you were starting in good territory, the care or your own 44-yard line, and that takes you back 15. They'll run it this time. Looks like that was Thomas. Mike has not been able to find any success in the early going so far. Five yards on the ground so far for Micah Thomas. Who entered the game, one of the leading rushers in the Northern 10, 620 yards on 77 attempts. But what you like most is that yards per carry average of 8.1. Not that kind of breathing room in this matchup. No, Carey's defensive front is doing an amazing job of closing the middle holes, not letting any of the Crawford backs get any room to run. More flags coming in. It's going to be a false start on Connor McMichael for the Eagles. Let's see if we can catch it on our Baker's Pizza of Bucyrus replay. Ooh, just a little flinch. That's all it takes. It's their fourth penalty here in the first half. And it makes this third down conversion even more challenging. If you look at where they are, Josh, they got to get into carry territory to get the chain gang on the move. Vote had some breathing room, but they just collapsed quick as he tried to cut back inside. He had three carry Blue Devil hats flying at him. That's the first time he's been able to get an edge all night long. But probably more by design than anything with the secondary playing back as far as they were for the Blue Devils who force yet another Eagles three and out as they'll send Smiley back to return this punt along with Austin Niedercore standing at the carry 35 yard line. Good boot. It's Morton with the punt. Blue Devils are gonna let it take a hop and it is a favorable one for Colonel Crawford. So they'll back carry up inside of their own 30 yard line coming off of a touchdown drive on their previous possession. So they'll be looking to ride a little wave of momentum here into the break as we're getting short on time. 3.47 to go until we reach the half. And as always here on the OH Report, we will carry both band performances live and free for you. Break down some stats, get some analysis for you, and check in on some games from around the area as well. A lot of good action going on in high school football tonight. We'll have a full recap on the Friday night pigskin right about 11.30 p.m. Eagles do rush just four as we get a quick throw out to Austin Niedercore who slides down to make the grab. A great catch there by Niedercore. Slide down, get his hands under the ball. And it comes up as a gain of five, so Offense starting to come a little bit more comfortably to this Blue Devil squad here after a bit of a slow start. They went back to what they're known for there on that drive to score the touchdown. Now they're going to get back in the gun and look to throw it. This is Trip Phoenix forced out of bounds, but not until after a burst in Bakey's insurance first down gain. And you see Smiley getting into a bit of a rhythm now as he's easing into the contest. 
He's doing a great job rolling away from the pressure and finding his open guys. That time it was Tripp. Before that it was Yeeter. That exact same play design was the big play to Dominique Yeeter there to take him down for a touchdown on the last drive. So it's a fresh set approaching midfield. Clock stopped at 3.06. Smiley's got three receivers to this near side. Looking that way, now going deep. And it's going to be a bit overthrown. Coverage on the play there by Brady Hill. He was step for step with Niedercor. Yeah, it's a great job by Brady Hill to run with him and then Trevor Vogt to step in and take over. Again, that's one of those balls if you're Smiley, you've got the Eagle defender running right with him. That could be a dangerous pass. But he put it in a spot where either Niedercor was going to get it or the Eagle defender could not get to it. Carter Smiley, definitely one of those riverboat gamblers that you can tell from the pocket. Willing to give his guys a chance. Absolutely. Three receiver set. Quick pitch and catch to the outside for Putnam. Alex diving right near the chain, but not a very favorable spot, so it will bring up a third down here for the carry offense. Looks like it's going to be about a gain of eight, so we're going to have third and two for carry. And you watch the replay, definitely looks like he was shorted at least one yard. Absolutely. It almost looks like he got extended to get past that down marker. I don't know if his, if maybe that outside foot that we can't see from over here was out of bounds, but it looked like he was being tackled as he reached and got past that first down marker. Heavy set. Eagles make the stop. That was Northern trying to carry there on third down. And he definitely didn't get it. Check this out, Josh. Eagles spring everybody. I mean, and if you're Crawford, that's what you have to do in that situation. It's third and two. They come out in that formation. You know they're going to go power football. So a decision here for Coach Jonathan Mershman. Looks like he's going to wait, let this play clock run down, then he's going to take a timeout as he's standing over here with an official. Play clock down to five now. So he'll probably pull the trigger with about 2.10 to go. Make it 2.09. And Carey, in a great position here, Josh. The way their defense is playing, you, you definitely trust your offense to get a yard. But at the same time, your defense has played so good tonight. Do you allow your defense to get back on the field? Punt the ball, pin them. You know, even if you only get them inside their 20, I don't think they have... 30 yards of offense so far in this game. Trust your defense. There's two minutes left in the game. They haven't beat you deep yet, and they haven't proved they can do it yet. Interesting conundrum here for Coach Mershman because you look at where the football is. They're about less than a yard away. You've been dominating up front. Very few plays have gone for negative yardage, but at the same time, your defense is balling out, so it does appear they're going to try to pick this thing up, and if they don't get it, Hope the defense can come back in and do the job that they've been doing all night. Well, and this is the same. If you don't get this first down, this is the exact same field position that Crawford started out with on their last drive that went about 15 yards backwards. And they're going to start from the gun. Nearcore comes in motion from left to right. Eight guys in the box for Crawford. They bring some pressure. And Smiley's got the reception hooked up with Putnam for a huge first down. That's the second time they've done that tonight. They've come out, the last time it was third and one, this time it's fourth and one. We're expecting power football, and Smiley throws a perfect ball to Putnam to get the first down. Coverage on the play by Camden Phelps. Had a sophomore out on an island. And the referees blow it dead as the Eagles have burned their final time out here with a buck 47 to go. And though a ton of time on the clock, their back's a bit against the wall here. It's definitely that pendulum of momentum favoring the Blue Devils. They're moving it down the field, and you can tell the senior quarterback getting very comfortable now, Mr. Smiley. Yeah, I mean, he's completed five of his last six. The one that he didn't complete was a ball that he tried to throw up to Niedercore to go deep with. The three incompletions he has on the evening all could have been intercepted. They've been Fair. risky throws. But his completions have been on the money. 
and they're those quick throws. If you notice, his five completions he's had are quick throws. He, he's not sitting back there for four or five seconds. He's taking a quick three-step drop. He's getting the ball out quick. And, and he hasn't thrown the ball a lot this year either. He has yet to throw a touchdown pass, and he's thrown three interceptions. So he's showing improvements week in and week out. And if Smiley can get himself rolling, this carry team's going to be dangerous for the rest of the season. Smiley again, a quick one. I think this might have hopped into the hands of the receiver. That's what the referee says. So it'll be second down 10 on the way. As yes, we'll get a second look here on our Baker's Pizza replay. But again, it's a quick three step drop, get the ball out and he had a guy, he just underthrew him. Smiley, he, who took over starting, I think just a couple of weeks ago, starting to come into his own Putnam was the quarterback the first couple of games. Now Carter, over 400 yards on the season. Got a touchdown and a pick to his name as well. And he's gonna go for some gas to the end zone. Knocked down. But he likes those one-on-one -on -one matchups. He's definitely shown a proclivity to try to attack out on the wing anytime that he sees one of his guys locked up in those situations. And I tell you what, that's not a bad throw right there. That's really not a bad throw by Smiley. Lucas Foy had great coverage there for Crawford, but Yeeter was almost able to go up one-handed and grab that ball. Looking around the stadium, I mean, there are people on the entire fence line from one side to the next. So a tough ticket to get here tonight. Drove through a couple of streets here in Cary. Everybody was tailgating, having a good time. And definitely these Blue Devils fans would love to get some more points here before the half. But they've got another fourth down situation as they hand it straight off to Steen this time. Yeah, Steen's going to get six on the play, fourth and four, fourth and a long four. Power eye. And they're going to give it to Steen again, expecting their fullback to be able to roll out four yards here, and I don't know. It's going to depend on the spot. They're going to measure. No, they're going to give him the first down. It looks short from here. But they said that his momentum carried him beyond that marker. And definitely you got to give some love to Nathan Broadman there coming up from the fullback position and opening up a hole as we're under a minute to go. Smiley on the roll and it's nearly picked off. That's a vote playing back in the secondary. Bringing up second down. Yeah, he almost got over there. Smiley, again, it's a risky pass. Pressure coming, just throws it up. Had a man there, but Vogt comes out of nowhere and almost gets the interception. Trevor, just an absolute freak athlete. We see him out on the track and field. A lot of speed, good hops. I tell you what, you're going to see him a lot this winter on the hardwood. This might be the top two teams again in the conference. Yeah, no doubt. Smiley's going to take a shot. He's got Putnam. Oh, he's unable to bring it in. So we could see it. Putnam had a one-on-one -on -one in the corner. And he got two paws on it that time. Joshua just couldn't squeeze it. Carter Smiley threw the, the perfect ball there. Back shoulder throw to Putnam. He turned around. The ball was right in the bread basket. And it just went right through his hands. And after completing five of six, he's now had four consecutive incompletions. It looks like they're going to take a knee and let this clock run out to halftime. No, they're going to run it. Yeah, it's going to be Smiley keeping down to the 20-yard line. Maybe a gain of five for Smiley. Smiley with the carry. Gain of all. Does make it fourth down, though. And the Blue Devils may let this run down and See what they've got in the kicking game. Yeah, only don't watch the play clock, if you close Meshman, because there's 15 on the play clock and there's 10 on the game clock. Meshman's going to let it roll down to two seconds, pulls the trigger on a timeout. So one last play. 
for potentially the carry offense or if they're going to try to kick what would be a 36-yard field goal. Looks like their kicker, Pinkerton, is going to be stepping onto the field, so they might be trying a 36-yard field goal here, which we don't see very often at the high school level. Pinkerton on the season has made two extra points. Yet to attempt a field goal, though. Doesn't look like Carey has tried a field goal yet this season, according to the season stats I have in front of me. So no time like the present, Josh, and I thought 10 points would do it here tonight. This could be huge from 37. Down, good, and that's gonna be not just right, but short as well. As that takes us into the break, heck of a black and blue game going on here for first place outright in the Northern 10 Conference. Colonel Crawford trying to stay undefeated while the Blue Devils look to improve their win streak to four straight. Stick around for our halftime show presented by First Federal Community Bank. We'll have some Halftime band performances, stats, analysis, and more. You're watching live and free high school football exclusively on OH Report. Are you ready for the comeback? Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. toil. We sweat. We live. We breathe. We ache and cry and laugh and bleed. We dance. We play. We love. We nourish. We yearn and wish and hope and cherish. We mend, we heal, we repair, we sow, we plant and tend and gather and grow. We feed our families and the world's too. It's a calling, a feeling, real and true. We need no thanks, rewards or dues. We love this land. It's what we do.
his pure musical swagger, soaking the vibe as we bring you the undeniable charm and groove of this legendary hit, Shark Dressed Man by ZZ Top.
side of Terry Crews' tonight's show featuring the recent Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees, the Foo Fighters. The Foo Fighters were formed in 1996 by former Nirvana drummer Dave Grohl and has become one of the most renowned modern rock bands of all time. This song was arranged for the Pride of Kerry by junior percussionist Brody Baker. The Pride of Kerry closes tonight's show with one of the Foo Fighters' best songs ever all. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. We dance, we play, 
we love, we nourish, we yearn and wish and hope and cherish. We mend, we heal, we repair, we sow, we plant and tend and gather and grow. We feed our families and the worlds too. It's a calling, a feeling, real and true. We need no thanks, rewards or dues. We love this land. It's what we do. Brought to you folks live and free thanks to the good folks at HDER Link, providing reliable, affordable, friendly internet service to residential and business customers in the Cary area and beyond. First Federal Community Bank, banking locally just got a little easier. Baker's Pizza of you, Cyrus, proud to be of service to the community, even more proud to be the place to go after every local game. Stop in at Baker's and have a meal soon. Jessica Gosman, Key Realty, meeting all your home buying and selling needs every step of the way. And Burkhart Farm Center, farmers serving farmers. This is the first Federal Community Bank halftime. I am Brian Skaronsky with you guys again. Joshua Banks, my sidekick here tonight at Cary for a very defensive contest, much like we anticipated Josh. Cary was able to score on a nice long drive, and outside of that, the Blue Devils have moved it a little bit. Colonel Crawford, not so much. Yeah, I mean, Cary's job defensively tonight has just been absolutely amazing. We talked about it in pregame. You, your key for them force the air and they force Crawford into two or three third and longs and that's Crawford's two turnovers that you see here on the halftime stats were third and 20 third and 25 and, and I mean we're looking at it right now you guys are too it's just been this game has been dominated by Carey even though the score is only seven nothing they have just done everything right They've looked like the better team, the more physical team, and they're going to get the football here to start this second half. So an opportunity for the rich to even get richer at a place where very difficult to beat the Blue Devils. Few have come here on the road and been able to take them down over the last few seasons, including this year undefeated so far in the friendly confines here at Blue Devil Stadium. And a couple of other halftime scores of interest to you guys. Winford's on top of Bucyrus, 35-18 at the break for that copper kettle. Lucas leads Monroeville, 17-14. Ontario and Galleon in a shootout, 38-28. I don't even think that one's at the half yet. That's going to be Colonel Crawford football inside the 10-yard line. The carry returner thought it was going to bounce out of bounds. It stays in. Crawford hustles down the sideline to recover it. Lucas, Lucas Foy, Foy on the run down the sideline. What just happened? A huge turn of events here to start off the second half. We were talking about the Eagles really having no momentum going into the break. Carey had been moving the football, had an opportunity to make it 10 zip with a missed field goal right before the end of the second quarter. And now brand new heartbeat beating for Eagles fans. Yeah, I mean, you're inside the 10, your best field position by far all night. Punch the ball into the end zone, tie the game up. And this ball game just completely flipped script. His vote's going to get around the outside. He's going to do what he's done all year and get into the end zone. So just like that, Colonel Crawford strikes. They are a point away from evening things up. 
as he coasted that one in from the nine yard line. My goodness, what a start here to this third quarter. A 60 yard onside kick and a one play touchdown for Colonel Crawford. Eagles back in business as they trot out Braxton Morton to try to tie things up. Five seconds is all that has ticked off of the clock here. Though we've got a flag on the field. And this one is going to go against Carey. So maybe decision time for Coach Bruner and his staff. He moving the ball a yard and a half closer. Do you want to try and go for two and take the lead here on the road? Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. I think if you're Coach Bruner, that is a tough decision, but you just came out and scored. This carry defense has been stout all night. Take your point, tie the game as they will, and see what you can do. Wow, what a start here to the third quarter as we are all square now at seven apiece. Are you ready for the comeback? Tonight's after touchdown sponsor is HDER Link providing reliable, affordable, friendly internet service to residential and business customers. Contact HDER Link today by calling 419-396-3815. So a mass change in terms of the flow of the game now with Colonel Crawford catching a big break. Opening kickoff somehow, some way stayed in the field. A play, Eagles are able to recover. One play later, Trevor Vaux into the end zone and we're all tied, Mr. Banks. I've seen a lot of crazy things in high school football. It is high school football, but that might be the first time I've ever seen that far of a kick not get picked up by the opposing team or go out of bounds. This time, Carey will field it. This is Niedercore, and he's got a bit of a gap. Austin Niedercore to the outside, rips his way through a would-be tackler, cutting back against the grain into Colonel Crawford territory before he's slung down at the 44. So matching fire with fire, an explosive start for the Eagles. And now special teams for Carey responds with a big play of their own. Austin Niedercore fielded that kick. He had a bunch of grass in front of him. Morton actually does a good job there, the kicker, of just kind of getting in his way and letting his guys get back to make the tackle. Craziest start to half I've seen in a long time. And it is a burst in Bakey's first and 10 here for Smiley and company. Man to man across the board here coverage wise. So he's gonna do a pitch and catch Putnam running over the the secondary man of Logan Goddard. And a nice quick hot start. One play, one first down for the Blue Devils offense. What more could you ask for if you're carry? You come out, you had 10 first downs in the first half. Your first play of the second half is a first down as well. So the Devils down to the 32 as they'll break the huddle three wide. Niedernkor comes near side here with Broadman. Smiley's got Steen to his right. Turns and throws. Broadman lowers the shoulder and booms his way inside of the 25-yard line. And it's these three-step drops, Josh. That seems to be the offense right now and what's been most comfortable. And Colonel Crawford, if they're going to keep playing man-to-man -man and give that 10-yard cushion, it, it seems like it's pretty easy pickings out there. Yeah, I mean, the, the inside receiver, and Niedercore just did it on the other side. They're sending two wide to one side. The inside receiver's running a five-yard curl route. As soon as he turns the balls on him, they were practicing that in pregame, that throw that he's made all night long. They're going to have to press these receivers if you want to stop them. Second is short. Flag's going to blow this thing dead. It's going to be encroachment against the Eagles. And that'll be another first down for Carey. We'll take a second look on our Baker's Pizza replay. 
Maybe somebody was lined up offsides. I didn't see anybody jump on the replay. Maybe they were lined up in the neutral zone there. Whatever it was, it sets up the carry offense now inside the red zone. Trying to match that crazy start here with Colonel Crawford scoring on one play. Here's Steen. Boy, does he run hard. Down to the 15 yard line in another solid gain. This dude almost never gets dropped for short yardage. You're not gonna tackle him for a loss. Again, he's six foot, he's 240. He's gonna get the yards. He's gonna get two or three yards every time he touches the ball just because he gets his momentum going. And when his legs start going, you're not gonna push him backwards. That's why Eli Steen was our player spotlight tonight. Coming into the contest, one of the leading rushers in the Northern 10. Approaching 500 yards on the season. Though this time the Eagles do a nice job of securing them. They wrap them up for a short gain and first third down the carry is going to face here on this drive. Consistently successfully got these thirds down in that first half. Did what they wanted to do really offensively and, and we'll see what they do here. They've really kind of thrown us off tonight. These third, you know, third and five, third and four, we expect them to keep running the ball, but they've let Smiley get outside the pocket and throw it a couple times in this situation. He's got Steen to his right hip. Follows him in through the hole. Carter's got the first down and more as he gets drilled right about the 10. It's gonna depend on the spot. They're gonna call it fourth down. They're gonna say he's half a football short. Now I thought for certain we'll take a look at the run or at least the end of it. They needed to get just inside of the 10 yard line. And with that spot, Josh, you're absolutely right. It's gonna be fourth and short for this carry offense and an injured Eagle is down. We'll take a quick commercial break and we'll be back here at Cary. Blue Devils knocking on the door, but they'll need to convert on a critical four down. Coming up. Are you ready for the comeback? Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Injured Eagle, he's getting help as he's walking gingerly off the field. Not sure what he's favoring. Looks like they were looking at the right ankle when he was on the ground. And it's a key fourth down in inches for Carey, who comes out triple stacked in the backfield. And they'll give it to Steen left side. He's got a huge hole carrying some Eagles with him, and he scampers into the zone. Blue Devils take the lead back. And I'll tell you right now, Eli Steen just had a man's run. He just ran through the entire front line and linebackers of Colonel Crawford. Just boom, boom, boom. No one able to bring him down. Big, thick legs for the sophomore. 
as he gives the Devils a six-point cushion and a chance to make it a seven-point game. The kick, though, is no good, so it remains 13-7 as we pause for a quick message from HDER Link. Are you ready for the comeback? Tonight's After Touchdown sponsor is HDER Link, providing reliable, affordable, friendly internet service to residential and business customers. Contact HDER Link today by calling 419-396. 16, his seventh rushing score of the season and the Cary Blue Devils now with a six-point lead over Colonel Crawford. 13-7 as we welcome you back to Blue Devil Stadium. Brian Skronsky alongside Josh Banks. And here's Trevor Vogt setting up excellent field position for himself and the offense as they'll have a burst in Bakey's first down. Coming up at about the 45-yard line, so quality stuff here for the Eagles in terms of the special teams play but again one more look at the sophomore rumbling in let's give the Blue Devils their edge back here at home three minutes into the third quarter we've had more points scored in the second half than we had in the whole first half but we'll see what adjustments coach Bruner made at halftime for this offense who had 45 yards in the first half Eagles have not been able to move it tonight against this staunch carry D that has been coming into their own these last few weeks, dominating the competition. But Vogt's got a rare completion here as he hooks up with Lucas Foy, who dives forward for right about six yard gain. And you see a very similar route and drop back there to what we've seen all night from Carter Smiley. A quick three step drop, quick slant run there by Foy. Vote hits him in stride. He's able to catch it and get six yards on the play. Second and short, Thomas the lone back. They run in behind him. Linebacker crew comes in with Broadman. Laying some wood there at the second level. Force a third down here for the Eagles. Looks like he's going to get maybe a yard on that. It's going to be third and two, third and three. but they do bust into carry territory. As vote with the quick count, I think they were able to get the Blue Devils to jump off size. That would be their first penalty of the night. Big one. That's a huge penalty if you're carry. Crawford really not moving the ball well tonight. Third and three, could have got yourself off the field. Unfortunately, you make a mistake, give Colonel Crawford a first down and keep their momentum going. So it's a Burson Baker's insurance first down as vote again to the sky. Basically the same exact play in Foy. Pretty similar deja vu to what we saw a couple plays back. Yeah, and that was a great job there by Trevor to sit in the pocket. He had pressure right in his face, sat in there, made a good throw. Foy goes and gets it. His favorite target so far tonight, I believe all of his completions this evening have gone to Lucas Foy. Foy on the season came into the game just with two grabs for 29 yards. Got two catches in the last three Eagles plays. And they'll keep him spread this time. Vogt calls his own number, head of steam to the outside, and he dives forward to move the chains. First down, Colonel Crawford, and 
a sign of life here from this offense in the second half, Josh. Yeah, they're doing a really good job of keeping Carey off balance. That first half, Carey was coming out. They were putting eight or nine guys in the box, forcing Crawford to beat them with their arm. Votes two for two in the second half for 11 yards. They're quick passes, but it's the same thing that Carey's doing to Crawford. Quick passes makes you be honest. You have both the open lanes, and he's going to make a play. They're going to give it to Thomas. And a lot of Blue Devils fans feel like maybe he was holding on the defense. Actually, not 100% sure what they were calling for here. Checking on the replay. Yeah, they're calling, looking for a hold there. Yeah, that's what, Tyler Smith? Tyler Smith got a handful of jersey that was not. It's football. You see it on Sundays, you see it on Saturday at the college level, we're going to see it on Friday nights. Not every hold, false start, encroachment, not everything's going to get called. So is the clock rolling closer to the halfway point here this third quarter? It's going to be a botched handoff attempt. It is loose. It looked like the Eagles were able to pounce on top of it. Boy, there were a lot of Blue Devils there in the area, though. And Vote is able to get it back. Let's slow this thing down for you and show you. Trevor turns, looks like he's trying to fake it to Thomas. Oh, and he does just snatch it right back up. Yeah, Trevor, very strong hands there. Missed the fake to Thomas, able to hold on to the ball. Crucial snap coming up here for Colonel Crawford on the move. Wanted to keep this drive alive. Thomas has been seldom used. They, fake it to him here and it's a big crash coming in as Carey converges to make this a fourth down. And on the tackle, number 10, Trent Phoenix, Phoenix and company getting in there making it impossible for Trevor to find a lane. And I'm not sure if it they're going like to kick a field goal. It looks like they're going to attempt a field goal. Hmm. This will be a... Braxton Morton attempt. 40 plus yards. 39 to be exact, and he boots it, had the distance, but it's off target. And the carry defense does its job. Let's take a second look on the Baker's Pizza replay. Had plenty of leg. Just pushed it left. Plenty of leg. Just pushed it left. Football back into the hands of Carey as they'll start with it at their own 20. 80 yards of green in between them and extending their lead. Curious to see what they do here. The last drive they came out, they really went back to the ground with that triple I formation that they run. All night long when they've come out and went ground, the next drive, as we're gonna see right here, they come out and they go shotgun. They've really rotated every drive so far this evening. Eagles showing some pressure. Broadman's showed some nice hands for a big fella. As he surges forward, that's gonna be a first and Bakey first down. And mixing it up, go into that bag of tricks here with Smiley putting his foot in the ground and just executing those three-step drops routinely tonight. Yeah, doing a great job. Execution has been huge for them, especially in the passing game. Smiley doing a great job. He's really hitting his first read every time, and now they're going to mix it up. They're going to go right back to power football. Three backs lined up. Niedercore, the deepest, or Connor Norton, rather. And that's going to be another first and Bakey first down. Nice burst, and we've seen pretty much every ball carrier for the Blue Devils. You got to get more than one hat on to the runner because they're going to keep the legs churning, fight for extra yardage, the home crowd, bringing a lot of juice tonight for them. Yeah, if you don't make a proper form tackle on carry, if you try an arm tackle, they're going to run right through an arm tackle. If you just try to lay the boom to them, they're going to lay it to you and they're going to run right through you. It takes two or three guys to bring down these carry Blue Devil backs. Split them out wide. Three this time. Smiley all the way turns the corner into a mess of Eagles. He's got seven, though, to start things off here. Smiley with the keeper. Down to number 41, Tyler Smith. 
And I think the biggest thing we've seen so far tonight is Carey's done a really good job of mixing their formations up offensively. I don't think we've seen Vogt get under center tonight. Everything's been shotgun. Carey's got so many different offensive formations that they run, it's hard to read them. It really is. They'll shift back to the heavy set, two tight ends in. It's the lead man, Steen. Maybe a yard on the play, so it'll be a third down on the way. Devils need to catch the 45-yard line to keep the offense out of the field. Yeah, I mean, if you're Crawford here, this is a huge third down. Third and two, you expect they're going to hand the ball off inside to Steen or let Smiley get around the edge. But we'll have to wait and see. They leave the big boys out there yet again. Steen the middleman, and they'll toss it. Here's Norton behind him. He gets to the outside, a little stiff arm, and he's drugged down, but not until after he picks up yet another Burst and Bakey insurance. First down. That's Norton's second run already in the second half of over 10 yards. They didn't have a single run in the first half that went for 10 yards. Starting to find a groove here in the rushing attack as we're under two minutes to go before we would reach fourth quarter action. And the Blue Devils continuing with this trend where they go heavy set, then they come back to the three receiver formation. And they're running it here near side again. Smiley about three extra yards after contact right there. Make this second and very short as he fought almost to where the line he needed to get. That's a great job by Smiley to get nine yards. I mean, almost 10, nine and a half yards on the play. But like you said, contact, they're fighting through contact. Yards after contact in this game, Carey has dominated in. I mean, they don't go down after contact as they're going to go right back to the heavy formation here. Play clock down to eight. Smiley hands off to Norton. Slithers his way for a few, and then the pile just gets pushed inside of the 25 for a Burson Bakey insurance first down. Blue Devils starting to rack them up here on this drive. Not only racking up the yards in the first downs, but they are controlling the clock. They're getting ready to eat the rest of this third quarter with the ball still in their possession going into the fourth quarter. When this is all they want to do, they could run, almost run out half of the fourth quarter as well before they even get in the end zone. This could be the final snap here of the frame. Smiley tosses Needencore. The deep man this time, rustling his way through traffic. And first downs have been very kind to the Devils tonight. They pick up eight more right here. Six, seven yards of carry on first down, doing everything they need to do to keep the football in their possession and win a football game. They will allow the clock to melt down. So we are headed to money time. Blue Devils looking to cash some checks here of winners of four straight, but the Eagles hanging tough down by just six as we're on our way to the fourth. Are you ready for the comeback? Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report.
action begins here. Carey with the football and a second down play. And the chain gang remains on the move here as they'll pick up another first down on this drive that started at their own 20 yard line. Blue Devils playing with a lot of confidence now, believing in their guys up front, Josh Banks. Believing in their guys up front and believing in their system. Believing in what's got them to the record they have and what's won them two consecutive N10 titles. Run the football. See, we've got a whole host of fans out there watching live and free. I'll dive into the comments section here after this play. And it's a gang tackle, a gaggle of Eagles coming in. And you see the Blue Devils always fighting for extra yards. Looked like that was going to go for no gain. Went down for about a pickup of two. And I see Beth watching from Siesta Key, Florida. Thanks for tuning in, Beth. Jennifer says, keep it up, Eagles. Robert says he already watched the first half. Well, cool. Me too. It was a pretty good one. A lot of defense played out there. Paige cheering on the Devils. Lyle says, Talon's up. Kelsey, go Eagles. Julia, yay Eagles. As we're set up here for a second down run. And it's right into the teeth of the defense. It'll be a third down on the way here for Carey. Like it's going to be a third and three. They got to get inside the one to get a first down. So at this point, it might as well be a third and goal because the first down is likely going to be a touchdown. Again, we'd like to thank folks and spring for donating the game balls for tonight's game as well as all of junior high games this season. Monster play coming up, especially for that Eagles defense. Trying to keep their team in the game. Stacked box, dotted eye, and they'll toss it. Norton reaching, and he's going to be marked down. We're going to have a flag on the near side. Check the replay here. Let Baker's Pizza run it back for us one more time. See just a huge pancake block out in front that time by Eli Steen. As the referees are convening and talking, I think they might have picked it up. They're talking here. I'm not exactly sure. Coach Mershman's out on the field with one of the referees in his ear. And now Coach Bruner wants an explanation. Another official jogging over to that side of the field. And I, I don't know that there is. I think they're picking it up. And with that last carry, it was real close to being first down yardage, Josh. They have not. Looks like they didn't pick it up. I'm not sure what the call is, but they are moving back. It's like five yards. So you're 100% right. It's, it is a five yard penalty, but I don't think they ever said really what it was, but they'll replay the down. So third down here. Third and eight. So third and two become third and three becomes third and eight. Niedercore dots the eye. They toss to him. Here's Austin to the outside. And he basically just gets leveled. Fourth down on the way here for the Blue Devils. He's gonna take it down to the five. So he's gonna get four on the play. Devils offense, looks like they're gonna stay out there. A field goal, of course, would be big. Two possession game. They've got the heavy set in. Smiley gives, gives it, it to Steen, left side. That's gonna be really close. It's gonna depend on the spot. It looks like they're gonna hold him. It's gonna be Crawford ball inside their five. So Eli Steen needs to get inside of the two. 
And he was on top of some bodies as he was reaching there. But the referees have already made the determination that it's going to be first and 10 Eagles. But boy, are they backed up, Josh. We haven't seen them move the football very well tonight and 98 yards of greenery in between them and a potential tie. I was going to say they did a great job there getting that stop but they haven't moved the ball against this carry defense very successfully this evening. And now they got a long way to go with eight minutes to go in the ball game. Carry's only allowed 11 touchdowns through five and three quarters of a game so far this season. Eagles have been even better. So these are definitely the two very best that we have in the Northern 10. Defensively, they're the two best teams that we're gonna probably watch all season long. Now can Crawford's offense step up and have a huge drive to tie this football game? Probably have to rely on the right arm of their senior quarterback. Or his legs was able to get to the second level for a pair of Blue Devils. Took a nice shot on him. Making a third down, nice move there by Vote. And then you see Niedercore coming up from his safety position, wallops him along with Smiley. Looks like we're gonna have a third and two here for Colonel Crawford. They've stopped the run up the middle all night long, but they've contained your outsides. This is almost where that quick three-step drop pass, they're gonna leave it in the hands of Vote. He's gonna get met in the backfield and taken down. Absolutely no breathing room that time for Trevor Vote. Tried to go with the quick snap. Devil's got the push off the edge. They've struggled to run the ball up the middle successfully all night long. In that situation, you almost trust him to throw a quick slant to Lucas Foy that's worked so far here in the second half. Now it's Morton's leg, and that's a very short punt. Carey's gonna take over on their own 30-yard line. Yeah, very fortuitous bounce as well. If you're a Devils fan, check this thing out. Boom. Jumps back about five, six yards. So the Blue Devils back in business. Makes their gamble on fourth down look a whole lot better here as they've got the football back. 6.56 remaining. And any points on the board would make this a two possession game. At this point with the football that Carey plays, I don't expect them to come out of this wing T power eye formation the entire drive. Carey's gonna burn their first time out here of the second half. It'll give me a quick moment to dive into the comment section, see what you guys are up to out there. See a couple of new comments coming through. Nancy says defense with some yellow and black hearts. What was cheering on the offense a couple of plays ago? Tanya says, go Blue Devils. Angie looking for an update on the injured player from earlier. I haven't heard anything yet. Look over to the sideline and see if we see anything. Over on the YouTube side of things, Remington cheering on the Eagles. The Farmer Cop says, go CC. Russell Romans can't stop that run game, go Blue. Over 400 of you all watching together on YouTube right now. Along with a crowd of about 150 on the Facebook. So good viewing crowd on hand here for the de facto Northern 10 championship game. The winner of this in the driver's seat. Blue Devils looking to win their third consecutive N10 title. And look at that push up front. Boy, have they been good tonight at just moving the pile. They're big, they're strong, they're physical, and their line moves you up front. I mean, 
Look at the two big uglies downfield. They had the double team and just absolutely smothered them at the point of attack. Garrett Bowes downfield, along with Landon Mitchum. I mean, that's 500 combined pounds of maniac men down there in the trenches wearing carry on the side of their helmets. And then you've got Olamong at listed at 6'4", 290. Big tackle right there made by McMichael. So it forces a third down conversion here for the Blue Devils. I mean, you're third and one. Give it to Steen. That's been your workhorse. It looks like they do have enough for a first and Bakey first down. Yes, they do. So the running attack of Carey going to get down in the trenches tonight, allowing their big boys up front to do just enough on that last down. And for this Eagles defense, tough situation here. Backs against the wall. You got to be opportunistic. But Carey just playing so physical. Big challenge here for the Eagles. Inside give this time for Steen. Lowers the boom at about the 15 yard line. And that's what we've seen from him. He, he picks up five yards in a game that it doesn't seem that impressive, Josh. But I mean, if you're doing that time in and time out, the yards per carry, I mean, it, it's gonna be impressive at the end of the night. Yeah, consistently four or five yards every time he touches the ball. If you're a coach, that's all you ask for. I mean, you need three yards of play to get yourself to a fourth and one. You need four yards of play to get a first down every time. And he's consistently getting you three to four yards every time he touches the football. Average 7.1 entering tonight's game. Niedercore, the only player on the team with a better yards per clip average. He about eight and a half per game as Smiley goes to the end zone. We've got a wide open Putnam. I wish you could see it. I can. It's a carry touchdown. Nobody out there defending for Colonel Crawford. That's as open as you can get, Josh. Yeah, I mean, you can't ask for anything more. You've went power, 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 power. You go play action. Nobody goes with Putnam. He's wide open in the corner of the end zone. And I hate to say a game breaker, but that touchdown might seal the deal for the Blue Devils. Offense stays out there looking for the two-point conversion that would make it 21 to seven. They'll give it to Steve and he steamrolls his way in. So it is a 14-point cushion here for the Blue Devils at home, looking to close out money time with a big win in their back pocket. Are you ready for the comeback? Tonight's After Touchdown sponsor is HDER Link, providing reliable, affordable, friendly internet service to residential and business customers. Contact HDER Link today by calling 419 396 3815. Tonight's high school football matchup brought to you live and free thanks to HDER Link, providing reliable, affordable, friendly internet service to residential and business customers. First Federal Community Bank. Banking locally just got a little bit easier. Jessica Gosman, Key Realty, meeting all your home buying and selling needs every step of the way. Burkhart Farm Center, farmers serving farmers. And Baker's Pizza, the place to go for all of the game. Go in and have a great meal and a great time with friends and family. Why not tomorrow for the Buckeye game? It's a big one. Yeah, it's the comeback. Are you ready for the comeback? They are jumping around here at Cary as they have got a two-score cushion against their rival and nemesis, Colonel Crawford. 21-7 is now the count. And I love their unique formations on the kickoffs. So they'll boot this one deep, and it is just barely going to stay in bounds. Wow. 
So it's going to be rugged field position for Colonel Crawford right about their own 10 yard line. So Trevor Vogt's going to have to come out and be slinging it the rest of the night on the other side. Carter Smiley hasn't been asked to throw it often in the second half, Josh, but when he has, he's been perfect. Yeah, he's 4 of 4, almost 50 yards passing, but the big one's that touchdown. And it looks like we had a false start on the kicking team. Oh, Coach Rushman can't believe it. Which means we're going to re kick. They're going to move the ball back for a re kick. And I think Coach is so upset. They, they had already set the football. Moved a lot of pieces and parts. I've seen the ref throw the flag, but it's really weird to see a ref, the back ref, back here by the pylon, throw a flag for an encroachment or a false start. I believe we've got a final score in that Winford Bucyrus game. 5018 Royals win that matchup for a 26th consecutive year. Winford's dominated Bucyrus for a long time. They've struggled all year. We were talking about that at halftime. I mean, they're giving up probably close to 50 a game. More. And, and you can't, when you're only scoring, you know, they put up 40 against Upper. Upper's given up a lot this year too, though. Upper scores a bunch, but defensively they're not great. This is gonna get interesting now, though. Sam Cole to kick it again. And they'll do opposite side this time. It's caught on the fly here by Morton. And boy, what a change here. A flag is on the field. But it went from Colonel Crawford ball at their own 10 to now potentially having it in carry territory. We're going to have a flag is going to be on Colonel Crawford. Flag thrown right about midfield. It'll Looks be like it was holding, hold, huh? Yeah. So it'll change, it'll flip the field position by 10 yards. Well, from where they had it spotted, it's gonna be a good 15 yard difference here. So the Eagles gonna have to go through the air, but they'll start here with a little toss and trickery. Here's Volk going deep wide open, and it's his man and Ryan McMichael. Unable to get a foot in. Could not stop his momentum to drag a foot and stay inbounds. It's a great ball by Volk. McMichael's wide open. Oh, tough to tell our scoreboard's blocking it there. And perhaps the referee influenced by the carry coaching staff that was two inches away from the play had the best look in the house. They said it was no good all the way. Great draw up there by Coach Bruner to go with a little trickeration, get under center for the first time tonight. Let Vote try to take a shot. He had his man, like I said, he just couldn't hit him. A double pump. Looking for the same target, McMichael again. And it quickly becomes third down and 10. I'm going to run that back one more time. I'll bring down the scoreboard and we'll see. I mean, this thing really close. Great looking throw, McMichael. That might be oh, a catch. Wow. That's, That's a, a catch. catch. His right foot gets in bounds before he goes out of bounds. That is a 100% catch. So the Eagles on the bad side there of a missed call, and we'll see what they can do with it. Rolling near side, now Vote's got a backtrack, just throws it out of bounds, and I don't think that's through the line of scrimmage. It's gonna be fourth down either way. Carry coaching staff calling for grounding. Not gonna get that call. And the Eagles basically down to their last play here on offense. As we're under four minutes to go, need to make up a couple of score differential. Yeah, you almost, this first down, if you don't get this first down, you still have three timeouts, but it's really gonna be difficult. 
Bunch formation to the near side. Vote rolls here, takes a big pop, puts it up, and it's intercepted. Niederkor on the run. He's got a convoy. He might be gone. Austin Niederkor catches a block, and he gets ripped down. I think it's a horse collar tackle. It, yes, it was. The flag came out late. So a huge play by the carry defense who have been superb tonight. I'll show you that last play again coming up in just a moment. A lot of it just came from the pressure that was coming on Trevor Vogt. Here's that really last play one more time for Bunch you. Formation to the near side. Vote rolls here. Vote gets Takes pops. a big pop, puts it up. Niederkor read it all the Niederkor way on the underthrow. He's got a and then Austin, he you're going to lose it, of course, here with the wall blocking your block, view. He but he gets ripped down. Horse collar tackle. First and goal from the four. Looking for a carry cherry on top of what would be a huge rivalry Sunday victory. Untouched. Blue Devils are rolling. The air horns are blowing. Cheerleaders going berserk. That was cherry on top. Eli Steen. Huge rivalry. Second Sunday. touchdown of the night. I think that's Nathan Geary. I think that was number 20. Steen's back here. Oh, you're correct. Gavin Snyder. That formation, it's so hard to see who they hand the ball off to. Spin it back for you guys one more time here. As the Eagles get a piece of that, they'll block the kick, but the damage is done. With 3.37 to go, they give it to the up, up man, and carry, blowing things open here on the road, or at home. Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. Capitalizes on their third interception of the evening. Putting their stamp on this game as they now lead it 27-7. Crucial Northern 10 game tonight. The de facto championship. And the Blue Devils flexing here as their defense has been basically perfect throughout the night. You, you look at the Eagles and what they've done, hasn't been much. Colonel Crawford's only touchdown and only real offensive production in this game came at the beginning of this half when they miraculously recovered a kick on their own 10-yard line and Trevor Vogt ran it in on the next play. Other than that, this carry defense has been absolutely stifling all night long. This is Micah Thomas spinning his way for a pickup of five. And Cole cocked by this carry secondary after he got to that second level. Thomas hasn't been used much tonight. Not as much as we're used to seeing him used. I mean, he's their main feature back other than vote. Had 77 carries coming into tonight, I believe. Less than a handful here in this contest. Seven. Here's Trevor catching the edge for a minimal gain. Picked up two. And it quickly becomes third down, and that's been a problem all night for Colonel Crawford in this offense. Third downs 
Now here, luckily, you're kind of in the third, and I wouldn't call it short against this carry defense because you still need three. But a third and manageable, not the third and 15, 20, 25 that you're used to seeing so far this evening. Vogt shifts some things around, now gives it to Thomas. And he got away that time from Dwayne Gibson, but could not pick up the first down. Wow. He gets away from the first tackle, but there's four more Blue Devil hats there. He gets two yards on an effort that would normally get you 10 plus. Eagles allowing the clock to roll away here as we're under 10 on the play clock. We're gonna have a Crawford timeout. So I'll dive back into the chat section for the last time tonight. And we see Terry having a good time. All caps with a couple exclamation points. Go Blue Devils. Jim Leatherwood says good job, Austin. Go Devils from John Twinning. Lana agrees. She says, go Devils. Amy with a bunch of blue hearts in there. Pudge from Riverdale, but has been following Devils football for a long time. I see why. Nancy says, thanks for covering the game. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. That's all on Facebook, where there's still 110 of you hanging around. We've dropped off considerably on the YouTube. 3.30 still hanging out with us, but a lot of comments coming in here. Sarah, go Blue Devils. Tons of exclamations there. Go Blue Devils, go Eagles, go Blue. Back and forth they go in the chat section. But it will be Carey rising to the top of the N10 after tonight. These are the lone two undefeateds remaining in the conference. It's gonna be three in O for the Devils. And they're going to shut Crawford down again on a fourth down attempt. Statement play right here as it'll set up a burst and bakey first down for Carey. This linebacking crew, the way that they're able to fill in behind those big dudes up front. Josh, I think that's the best defense I've seen this season. I can't argue that one bit. They. Not only do they fill, but their defensive front is so good at getting through the offensive line, getting where they need to get, and then they contain the edge so well. You're not gonna beat them on a sweep. You're not gonna beat them inside. And they've proven tonight, you're not gonna beat them through the air either. Now we've got the tough task of deciding who's gonna be our HDER link player of the game and join us for an interview tonight. I think there's plenty of options. Might need some help from you, the viewers out there. Let us know in the comments section who was the best player here tonight. Carter Smiley, perfect throwing and executing the offense in the second half. We saw great things from Eli in the running game as well. One of the offensive linemen would be a phenomenal choice. Niedercore's got two picks. Wow. Might have to do multiple MVPs. On a night like tonight, you almost have to. More sub 60 seconds before the celebration gets on here in Blue Devil Country. We saw the tailgaters before the game. It was ubiquitous all over town, certainly right here in their own parking lot. Kids throwing around the football, having a great time. And now they believe that they have won. The student section jumping around. They are correct. Victory formation for Carey. And after you go three and two to start the year, Losing to a very good Galleon team and a very good Hopewell Loudon team. You come out, you, you win your next three in dominating fashion. And then you come in here tonight and you take care of a Colonel Crawford offense that we talked about was averaging 41 points a game. And over 300 rush yards. And you hold them to seven points and under 100 yards total on the evening. We've got a new leader at the top of the Northern Tank Conference. Carey sits there all alone as they take care of Colonel Crawford 27-7.
We'll be back with our first Federal Community Bank post game that'll include an interview with our HDER Link MVP. All that coming up on the other side of a quick commercial break. Keep it here. Are you ready for the comeback? Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the OH Report. toil. We sweat. We live. We breathe. We ache. And cry. And laugh. And bleed. We dance. We play. We love. We nourish. We yearn and wish and hope and cherish. We mend, we heal, we repair, we sow, we plant and tend and gather and grow. We feed our families and the world's too. It's a calling, a feeling, real and true. We need no thanks, rewards or dues. We love this land. It's what we do.
players tonight from the Cary Blue Devils. Hang tight. We're gathering them up right now. And we will be back live and free here on the OH Report with interviews, stats, and then wrap things up here from Cary Blue Devil Stadium. Josh Banks here with you, Memorial Stadium, Cary, Ohio. We chose three MVPs tonight. We're going to start with senior captain Carter Smiley. Four for four in the second half. Great passing half for you with a touchdown to cap it off. 27 to 7 win against what we consider your rival, Colonel Crawford, in the N10. What made you guys capable? What changes did you make at halftime to be able to just come out and pound the football and do what you wanted to do offensively? Um, yeah, at halftime, we just kind of went in and we all said that we want to win the second half because we knew if we won the second half, we were going to win the game. And we just, we weren't done yet. We were having fun and we wanted to keep going. Really interesting start to the second half with the kick that I think we all thought was going to go out of bounds. They ended up staying in bounds. They score a touchdown off of that. Your defense holds them the rest of the half, including you out there playing both ways. All three of you guys just playing a great game. Was that a momentum swing for you guys as well when that mistake happened? Or did it kind of kill what you guys rode into halftime with? Um, we just, we always preach there's going to be adversity in the game, so we knew that if something didn't go our way, we got to be able to bounce back, and we bounced back, and we put the ball in a few more times and got the game over. Absolutely, you guys did, especially you with the touchdown pass. Um, we'll give you a chance to give a shout-out here real quick, and then we'll move on to the next one. So go ahead and look up there in that camera right there with that guy. Give a shout-out to whoever you want to, Carter. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to my line. They did a great job blocking tonight, and all my receivers just they're always there making plays for me, so they always they're making me look good. All right, so that first one was senior captain Carter Smiley. Hey, great game, man. Next we're gonna bring in senior 
corner, wide receiver, running back, a little bit of everywhere, Austin Niedercourt. Phenomenal game out of you tonight. You beat the DBs a couple times deep. Carter missed you a couple times, just didn't quite get it to you, or they blanketed you. Either way, you had a great game as well, had some carries for positive yards, but the big thing for you was the picks tonight. Played a great game defensively. Was that what you guys were looking to do, was push them into third and long and make them throw the ball? Oh, yeah. We we knew if we stopped their offense, we can do our part. So, like, a swarm, tackle, stop them from the passes. We run the reps all week, so we know what's coming at us, what to expect. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you almost had a pick six there at the end. How close were you, and are you all right? Because you got thrown down pretty hard there. Oh, no, I'm fine. It was nothing too serious. I just got up, played it off, and celebrated with the team. Absolutely, celebration for you guys. So what was the big key for you coming into this game to shut down this offense and for you guys to be able to do what you wanted to do offensively? Um, for us to do what we do offensively is we, we looked at last year's film. We watched this year's film. We see what they do, and we counteract that. We bring more people to block. We bring less people to block. We go opposite way, counters, everything we need to do to get them going the wrong way, and we go the right way. Absolutely. So we're going to give you the same thing we gave Carter. Go ahead, take a look up in that camera, give a shout-out to whoever you want to. Yeah, I also want to give a shout-out to the offensive line and the other receivers and DBs. Everyone on my team, we came together and just played great football. Awesome. That was senior Austin Niedercourt. Great game, bud. Now we're going to bring in sophomore running back Eli Steen. 80-plus yards on the ground tonight, including a touchdown. You've had a phenomenal year so far. What can you attest that to? Um, obviously, I've gotten, I've gotten faster, but uh, really our offensive line has been put me in good situations, and I just like to capitalize on those situations. And it's one of those things we were watching tonight. Every time you touch the ball, you're guaranteed three or four yards. I mean, you're listed at six foot, you know, 240. You're a big kid. If you get your momentum going, you're going to fall forward. And you're just, you don't go down with one tackle. Yeah. Um, watching from the sidelines, 2021, Jordan, I really want to just do that because uh, Coach Mershman always preaches no negative plays. He always wants me to just fall forward, get as many yards as I can, and move on to the next play. Absolutely, and you definitely did that tonight. No negative yards for you at all this evening. Like I said, 80-plus yards in the touchdown. You're becoming really accustomed to getting in the end zone this year. You're doing it a lot. Is it something that you wanted to do? I mean, you guys come out here 27-7 to over Colonel Crawford. We expected a defensive game, and your offense just came out and absolutely took care of business in the second half along with your defense. And that had a lot of tests to do with you. You had a lot of carries in the second half. Um, our game plan coming out of halftime was just two o'clock. Uh, they just told us we're, we're going to run the ball a lot, and we want to take as much time off the, off the clock and keep their offense off the field because they're dangerous. All right, so we're going to give you the same chance we gave both of those other guys. Go ahead, look up in that camera, give a shout-out to whoever you want to. Um, obviously, offensive line played great, but I'm going to shout out the coaches for trusting me to give me the ball, uh, having a great game plan. And All right, that was sophomore Eli Steen. Another great night on the ground for you. Congratulations on a big win, and we'll send it back up to Brian. All right, thank you, Josh. Excellent stuff there. Getting three different MVPs from Kerry. They were awesome here tonight as the Blue Devils roll 27-7. We'll take one last commercial timeout. We'll be back to wrap things up here from Blue Devil Stadium. Are you ready for the comeback? Take a look at all the action from Friday Night Football right here in North Central Ohio with great analysis, highlights, coach interviews, and so much more every single Friday night right here on the Always Report.
We toil. We sweat. We live. We breathe. We ache. And cry. And laugh. And bleed. We dance. We play. We love. We nourish. We yearn. And wish. And hope. And cherish. We mend. We heal. We repair. We sow. We plant and tend and gather and grow. We feed our families and the world's too. It's a calling, a feeling, real and true. We need no thanks, rewards or dues. We love this land. It's what we do. Back here with the first Federal Community Bank post-game show. Brian Skronsky along with Joshua Banks and Kerry Flexen here tonight at home as they handle business against Colonel Crawford 27 to seven in a game that you just talked to three of the stars of and they just felt like the game plan was stick to the script do what we do and it's good enough josh time in and time out here in this northern 10 conference yeah stick to the script do what they do run the football pass when needed and like we talked about in pregame force colonel crawford into third and longs make them throw the ball and the three times they do that tonight, it ends up in three interceptions for Trevor Vogt and three interceptions for this Kerry Blue Devils defense. Just an absolute dominant performance. The scoreboard says it all, 27-7. to seven. And when you look at the stats that we're going to put up here in a minute, they were Colonel Crawford under 100 yards of offense. Nobody's done that this year. Yeah, the Eagles have been running for more than 320 yards per game, limited to 65 here on the road. And the lone score that they got set up by a special teams play where they only had to travel eight yards to get into the end zone. So this is about as dominant as we've seen in this rivalry over the last five, six seasons. Yeah, this is one of those games every year we come in. We talked about it beforehand, defensive game, and it really was. I mean, it was 7 nothing at halftime. Came out. Carey really took control of the second half. Colonel Crawford has the one, you know, we'll call that a big play because a kick like that and recovering and inside your own 10 is a big play. But other than that, Carey just absolutely dominates. And we haven't seen Colonel Crawford be dominated like this in quite some time. And Carey's going to be dangerous in the N10 and throughout the rest of the season. Moving forward for the Devils, they're next going to take on Mohawk, who struggled a bit out of the gates. Colonel Crawford, a chance to at least get back healthy offensively, going against an upper Sandusky team that's been gashed by a few opponents so far this season. But we definitely, the anticipation would be that both of these teams are going to finish out the season undefeated the rest of the way. You got to do it out on the field. For Crawford, I think it's a little bit tougher of a test after getting beat up tonight. I think it's a tougher of a test, and they really, it showed tonight that, you know, offensively, they're, they're good. We know what we can expect from Crawford. Defensively, they struggled to stop the run tonight. Next week, they're going to run into an upper Sandusky team with Caden Holman at quarterback that wants to get in shotgun. They want to throw the football. Can their defense rebound after giving up 27 to carry and shut down a team that I watched last week score 60? Yeah. Tall task. Tall task. And then Carey's just, Carey's given up seven points in the last three and 10 games. And they're going up against a Mohawk squad that is struggling this year. So what are they going to do to them? Well, they are turning out the lights on us here at Carey. So we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. Definitely got to thank our generous sponsors for coming together and allowing us to bring this to you live and free tonight, including HDER Link and my guy Sean Berkey coming through for us. 
to help make sure that you guys didn't have to pay a nickel for this one. First Federal Community Bank as well with Christy Slagle over there. Baker's Pizza. Love all the food that they have at that facility. And you Cyrus definitely check them out for a meal during a game day. Jessica Gosman from Key Realty and then Burkhart Farm Center along with Burst and Bakey's Insurance all combining to help make this game a possibility tonight. Big special thank you to the Cary Athletic Department along with our unit here. Justin Wilson running our camera tonight in a tough position. So we salute you, Mr. Wilson, for getting, for getting through the night. For Joshua Banks, I am Brian Skaronsky saying so long for now. I'll see you guys in about two hours on the Friday Night Pigskin. Peace.